We're going to look at a perfect matching algorithm for bipartite graphs. The input consists of a bipartite graph, G, and a matching M in G. So the algorithm can start with any matching, and in practice, we can start with as big a matching as we can find by inspection. The output is either a perfect matching, or a pair M, T, where M is a matching, and T is a frustrated M alternating tree. And the steps are as follows. We repeatedly do the following. The first thing is, we check if there's any M exposed node. If there's none, then M must be a perfect matching, and so we return M. Otherwise, we choose an M exposed node R, and build an M alternating tree rooted at R. And the steps for building an M alternating tree has been discussed in a previous video. Next, we try to find if there's an edge UW, such that U is in the even set of the tree, and W is not a node in the tree. We saw that the M alternating path from R to U together with UW will form an M augmenting path, and so we can augment our matching. Otherwise, we return the pair M, T, and T must be a frustrated M alternating tree. The reason is that in the previous video, we saw that if you have an edge that has one end in the even set and the other not in the tree, for a graph, that end must be in the odd set, and so by definition, T must be frustrated. So let's run this algorithm on an example. And here's my graph, and we're going to start with the matching edges shown in double line. And I'm going to start growing my tree at this M exposed node. So recall that we have to find a pair of edges, U, V, V, W, such that U is in the even set, VW is matching edge, and add them to the tree. And here we can add this pair here. So now my tree will look like this. And let me mark the nodes in even set with blue, and nodes in the odd set with red. And we stop building the tree because we can't add this pair here, since this edge is joined to a node in the odd set. But we do see that there's an edge here that joins a node in the even set and a node not in the tree. And this is indeed an M augmenting path. And so we can now augment the matching, and this is the result. We see that there's no M exposed node, and so this matching is returned as the perfect matching. This algorithm can be used to prove a classical result called the Hall's theorem. The theorem states the following. Let G be a bipartite graph with bipartition x, y with the cardinality of x equal to cardinality of y. Then G has a perfect matching if and only if the cardinality of the neighbor set of S is at least the cardinality of S for every subset S of x. So the neighbor set of S denotes the set of nodes not in S joined by an edge to some node in S. So for example, if this is my graph, and this is S, then these two nodes will be in my neighbor set of S. One direction is easier to prove than the other, and we're going to prove the harder direction. So the direction we're going to prove is this. And we're going to prove the contrapositive of this direction, namely that if G has no perfect matching, then we can find some S such that the cardinality of S is bigger than the cardinality of the neighbor set of S, and S will be in the partition X. So let's assume that G has no perfect matching. And we use the algorithm to obtain M, T, where M is a matching and T is a frustrated M alternating tree. So let's write down some properties. Remember that the number of nodes in the even set has to be the number of nodes in the odd set plus 1. And because t is frustrated, every edge uw such that u is in the even set must have w in the odd set. And so we can say that the neighbor set of the even set must be a subset of the odd set. And in terms of cardinality, we can write this. Now, there are two possibilities. 
The even z must be in the same partition of the graph. That's because the even z consists of nodes that are of even distance from the root r. So let's consider the case when the even z is a subset of x. And this is the easier case because we can set s to the even z t. And what happens? Well, the number of nodes in s is of course equal to the number of nodes in the even set. But we know that the even set has cardinality one more than the cardinality of the odd set. And now, using this inequality, we can say that this is at least the cardinality of the neighbor set of the even set. And the even set t is simply s. And so we have found our desired s. So let's consider the case when the even set is a subset of y. And let's draw a picture here. So suppose this is my partition, x, y, and the even set is this set, and let's say the neighbor set of the even set is here. What we'll do is we'll take all the nodes that are in x, but not in the neighbor set of the even set, and call it s. Now, we cannot have an edge that joins a node in the even set and s. So the neighbor set of s must be a subset of y drop the even set of t. And now we can make our calculations. So the cardinality of s is the cardinality of x minus the cardinality of the neighbor set of the even set. But using this inequality, we can say that this is at least the cardinality of x minus the cardinality of the odd set. And we know that the cardinality of x is the same as the cardinality of y. That's the assumption in the theorem. And we know that the cardinality of the odd set is one less than the cardinality of the even set. And now this is bigger than the cardinality of y drop the even set of t. And because of this, this is at least the cardinality of the neighbor set of s. And so we have the cardinality of s bigger than the cardinality of the neighbor set of s. And s is now a subset of x by construction.